Let me welcome you to this lecture. We have been discussing the chemistry of metal polyfill complexes and we have so far looked at the different methods of preparation of metal polyfill complexes, both monoolefins as well as we have also seen preparation of conjugated olefins like butadiene. So now let us look at the bonding in metal olefin complexes and we will discuss the bonding in metal monoolefin mono complexes as the bonding uh, picture in conjugated olefins is uh, different from what we see in case of um, monoolefin complexes. So let us uh, first discuss the bonding in metal monoolefin complexes. So the most simplest picture or the most uh, simplest model for uh, bonding in metal monoolefin complex was uh, proposed by Dewar, Chap, and Dan Kanson. And this particular model that we are going to discuss now is essentially known as Dewar, Chap, and Dan Kanson model. So, so we know that in case of olefins, it has pi bonding orbital as well as pi anti bonding orbital. So, the pi bonding orbital in olefins donate electrons to metal empty orbitals in metal, and then uh, the metal orbitals or field metal orbitals can donate electrons back to the pi star anti bonding um, pi orbital in olefins, and this leads to formation of metal to ligand pi back bonding. So, let us look at the orbitals that are involved essentially. So, if we have an olefin, then we have the pi bonding orbital. So, it's an electron density is essentially clustered between the two carbon atoms here. And we also have by anti bonding or by So the metal now can accept electron density in orbitals of the like symmetry from the ligand by bonding molecular orbital and these electrons that are two electrons for in the by bonding molecular orbital in the olefin are donated to metal to form ligand to metal sigma bond. So, this interaction is uh, sigma in nature. Now, field orbitals or d orbitals of right symmetry, field d orbitals of the right symmetry can now donate electrons to the pi star anti-bonding molecular orbital in the olefin and this is by back bonding interaction. So here electron density is essentially transferred from the metal to the ligand. So as we have seen in case of metal carbonyl complexes or in case of other pi acceptor complexes. In this case also, in case of such pi complexes also, there is synergy between the ligand to metal uh, sigma donation and metal to ligand pi donation. Uh, so again, if you, metal ions which are electron rich or late transition elements prefer to form complexes with olefins because more is the uh, electron donation from metal to the ligand and uh, this will essentially uh, strengthen the ligand to metal sigma bonding because of the synergy between the uh, sigma donor and the pi acceptor um, interactions. So, we can now correlate these uh, ability of the metal to accept sigma electron density from the ligand and the ability of the metal to donate pi electron density to the uh, ligand with the electron affinity or 
electron affinity Ea as well as with promotion energy that is energy required to promote an electron to a higher energy level so for metals which have higher electron affinity in those cases it will be a better sigma acceptor so metals with higher electron affinity will have a high ea better sigma acceptor so metal with higher electron affinity can accept more electron density from the media and that is why we call them as better sigma acceptor and those metals which have low promotional energy so the energy for lifting an electron to a higher energy level is low those metals will be a better pi donor so such metals with low uh, promotional energy can donate uh, or the extent of pi donation to the ligand pi is molecular orbital is going to be high when the promotional energy for the metal is going to be low so we we'll look at some data to correlate what uh, this particular fact so if we look at the promotion energy as well as electron affinity of different metals say for nickel it is promotion energy is equal to 1.72 while the electron affinity is equal to 1.2 then for palladium 2 the promotion energy is equal to 3.05 and the electron affinity is 18.56 while for mercury 2, the promotion energy is 12.8. And the electron affinity is 16.90. So, what we see from here is that the promotion energy for nickel we see is very uh, low while the electron affinity is also low as compared to the other metals over here so it tells us that nickel zero is not a good pi acceptor because the electron affinity is not very high but the promotion energy is very low for nickel zero so it is a good pi donor so nickel two sorry nickel zero it is good pi donor because the promotion energy is low but it is a poor sigma acceptor but if we look at now the data for mercury Ag2 we see that the promotion energy is very high so the pi donor property or the pi uh, donor characteristics of our mercury 2 is going to be uh, poor while the electron affinity is very high so it is a good sigma acceptor, but it is a poor pi donor. So good sigma acceptor, but it is a poor pi donor. But if we look at now pellet data for palladium 2, what we see is that the promotion energy is not very high, as well as the electron affinity is uh, very high. So palladium 2 is a good sigma acceptor because electron affinity is high but it is also a good pi donor because we see that the promotion energy is uh, low. So, PD2 sigma acceptor and pi donor. So, it is both a good sigma acceptor as well as it is a good pi donor. So, the ability of palladium 2 to form metal olefin complexes is going to be high as compared to what we will see in case of nickel 2 as well as for mercury 2. So let us now look at the molecular orbital description of this 
uh, bonding model or how we can explain uh, the formation of metallolithic complexes by using a molecular viral concept. So for this, what we have to do, we have to identify orbitals of right symmetry which can uh, donate electrons or ligand orbitals of the right symmetry which can donate electrons to the uh, metal orbitals of again uh, appropriate symmetry to form the ligand to metal sigma bone while uh, ligand, ligand to metal sigma donation and also we have to identify orbitals which can participate in metal to by uh, metal to ligand by back donation. So if we we know the orbital or the ligand orbital which participate in uh, sigma bonding or is involved from ligand to metal sigma donation is the pi bonding molecular orbital of the uh, olefin and the orbital which is involved in pi bonding or pi back donation or which accepts electrons from the metal field orbital is the pi star antibonding molecular orbital of the olefin. So this is ligand to this is for ligand to metal sigma interaction while this is for metal to ligand pi interaction. So we have identified the orbitals of the ligand which are which participate in these interactions. So we need to now identify orbitals of the metal which can participate interact with these uh, molecular orbitals of the ligand and then you know uh, participate in this interaction. So the S orbital or the 4S orbital for tension metals for 3D tension metals can participate in can bind with this uh, molecular orbital that is the S orbital of uh, the tension metal as well as we see that the Px or Pj orbital if we consider this to be the x axis this to be the z axis and this to be the y axis that this is the Pj orbital of the uh, metal and this can also participate in uh, bonding with this uh, by uh, bonding molecular vital of the uh, olefin to again give rise to this ligand to metal interaction. So, similarly, the DJ score vital also have right symmetry. So, we draw the DJ score vital in this way. So, both the log the lobes the top, uh, have the same symmetry here because it is a D orbital and this also has the right symmetry to participate or interact with this pi bonding molecular orbital in ligand to metal sigma interaction. Similarly, we can also have the x square minus y square orbital, dx square minus y square orbital also has the right symmetry. So this is x. This we have already defined is y, and this is here is the z. So the x square minus y square orbital can also participate in this ligand to metal sigma donation. So now let us identify orbitals of metal which can interact with this pi star molecular orbital of olefin in the metal to ligand pi back donation. So as you can see over here, the metal. Px orbital because this is the x axis. Px orbital has the right symmetry to donate electrons to the pi antibonding molecular orbital. Similarly, we also have the, the xz uh, atomic or, uh, orbital of the metal. This is x, this is z. The, the Nz orbital of the metal also has the right symmetry to donate electrons to the pi uh, star antibonding molecular orbital of the olefin. So these are the orbitals which interact with the 
uh, respect your orbitals, your molecular orbitals in your olefin to in these two uh, ligand to metal sigma donation as well as metal to ligand pi back donation. So now what we see from here is that uh, in both of these interactions, the CC bond length in the uh, olefin is going to increase because in the in the first case here from ligand to metal sigma donation, the electron density in the bonding uh, pi bonding molecular orbital is reduced because the electrons are essentially donated from the bonding molecular orbital to empty metal D orbital. So there is induction in the uh, population of electron in the pi bonding molecular orbital and at the same time when there is metal to ligand pi back donation, we increase the electron density in the pi empty bonding molecular orbital and that is why once again this will also reduce the bond, CC bond order or the, the the bond order in for the CC bond in the olefin is going to decrease upon complexation with the uh, metal. So this particular fact we can verify by looking at the CC C double bond C stretching vibration in uncoordinated olefin as well as in case of coordinated metal olefin complexes. So we'll see two complexes, so CC stretching vibration in two complexes. So in case of the olefin, say ethylene, the C double bond C stretching vibration appears as 1623 cm inverse. So as we, it coordinates with metal center in different metal olefin complexes, say for example in case of the J salt, The CC stretching vibration appears as 1516 cm inverse. So, what we see is that there is a significant decrease in the CC stretching vibration when the olefin, that is ethylene, is coordinated to the metal center in a metal olefin complexes. And the reason is now obvious because we see that there is increase, uh, decrease in the electric density in by bonding molecular orbital and increase in the electric density in the by anti bonding molecular orbital because of coordination uh, to probably ligand with the metal because of this uh, ligand to metal sigma donation as well as metal to ligand pi by donation and that is the reason why the CC bond order decreases from uh, the ideal classical 2 and uh, the, the CC stretching vibration as well because of that reason also decreases from 1623 to 1516. So similarly we can see another complex Sorry, this is a palladium complex. So for this, we see the stretching vibration again appears at much lower value than what you see in case of the olefin uh, free olefin that is Italy. So the reason is only because of the decrease in this CC bond order. So one may also anticipate that there is, the CC bond is going to get lengthened because of the decrease in, uh, because of this decrease in uh, bond order between the uh, CC uh, bond of the CC bond in the olefin when it is coordinated to the metal center. So when we look at the structural data to verify whether there is an increase in the CC bond length in case of the uh, olefin with what you see in case of free olefin that is for the CC bond length in C2H4 that is ethylene, the CC bond length is 135 picometer and the CC bond length in case of the J salt is equal to in this case it is equal to CC bond length is equal to 137 so the increase in the CC bond length is very minuscule, very small and this does not really allow us to estimate the extent of pi back donation in uh, this metal olefin complex. But when you look at the structure of this J salt, uh, something very interesting or when you look at the structure of different metal olefin complexes, something very interesting comes up that is the substituents on the carbon atom in the ethylene 
are supposed to be planar in case of uh, in case of the free olefin, it is of course planar because the carbon is sp2 hybridized and the substituent on the carbon atom they lie on the same plane uh, with the carbon atoms and on both the carbon atoms actually the substituents lie on the same plane uh, but that is not the case when the olefin is coordinated to the uh, metal center in these metal olefin complexes and they deviate from planarity and the substituents do not necessarily lie on the same plane anymore. So this is how it is and what is also observed is that if you increase the electronegativity of the substituent on the olefinic carbon atom that it, then the deviation from planarity increases further. So let us put this in words increasing the electronegativity of the substituents increase the deviation from planarity. So there is going to be more deviation from planarity and uh, the olefin, the substituents will be further away from the plane of this carbon carbon uh, formed by this carbon carbon bond. Anyway, now we let us look at some more structural data which suggests that a strikingly striking similarity between epoxides and in metal olefin complexes. So if we look at the structural data for this tetracinoside substituted ethylene. This is a epoxide formed by this ethylene and a nickel complex formed by the same olefin L so these structures look strikingly similar because these cyanide groups or the nitrile groups over here they do not lie on the plane of uh, on the same plane with the two carbon atoms here same is the case in case of the uh, metal, um, this uh, metal olefin complex formed by this uh, formed by this particular tetracyano uh, ethylene uh, ethylene ligand, and interestingly, this angle between the formed by this uh, uh, CC bond axis with the nitrate group over here is 32 degree in case of the epoxide. And in case of this metal olefin complex formed by this olefin, the angle between the, the respective angle over here is equal to 38 degrees. So there is a lot of different, a lot of, lot of similarity between this epoxide formed by the olefin as well as with the uh, metal olefin complex formed by this nickel uh, metal in, with this uh, same olefin. So what it suggests, or we cannot really explain this particular formulation uh, by using the DOHR dimension uh, model that we have seen, bonding model that we have discussed earlier because the olefin is no longer in this case, the olefin is no longer in these carbon atoms and no longer as we do hybridize carbon atom as there is deviation of from planarity, these carbon atoms are you know more towards as we three hybridized carbon as compared to what you see, what you 
expect for an sp2 hybridized carbon atom so see so there is no double bond here and it, this is uh, more or less like a metallocyclopropane uh, complex and that is why we cannot use we cannot really uh, uh, use the dy chart and Panson model to explain bonding in such metal olivin complexes so let us now explain or try to understand these bonding model and compare it with the UHF and Panson model and then see if there is, we can explain or if there is coherence between these two uh, models. So let's take the metalla cyclopropane model and compare this with the Viva Chan and Dancin model where the olefin is bonded to metal in this way, where in this case the, there are two uh, metal to carbon covalent bonds, these are two centered two electron bonds as we see in case of uh, epoxides or cyclopropane, the, that kind of classical two centered uh, two electron bond. But here what we have is a donor acceptor bond, ligand donates electrons to the metal and metal donates, uh, you know, give pi do pi electronation to the uh, ligand and the empty orbital to form a complex. So let's call this the metalla cyclopropane description and this is of course the dy chat Dunganson model of metal olefin complexes this is the covalent model covalent Form. and this is donor acceptor form. So now the bonding in such um, uh, metallocyclopropane uh, complexes can be explained or you know we have two different bonds here so let's draw or by this for these two different uh, and metal to carbon bonds so Let's draw the first bond over here. Bonding interaction. And let's also draw the bonding interaction for the sorry, other magnetic carbon bone. So these are the two interactions or these are the two metal to carbon uh, bonds. These bonds are localized bonds, localized two center two electron bonds these are. So when we do uh, uh, linear combination of these two interactions, that is let's do symmetry adapted linear combination of these two interactions then what we are going to get are two delocalized orbitals these are localized orbitals and when we do the localized linear combination We will get delocalized orbitals and we will get two delocalized orbitals because one is this and the other one. Is where the two bones are not in the same place. In the first case, both the bones are in the same place, 
while in the second case the two bones are in different phase or the two or biotins that every metal uses are in different are of different phase. In this case, the two metal orbitals are of the same phase, while in this case we see the two metal orbitals as well as the two ligand orbitals are of different phase. So this is the linear combination or the delocalized uh, uh, that we get or delocalized orbitals that we obtain by uh, doing linear combination of these two localized orbitals for, for formation of these metal to carbon uh, uh, bonds, two center two electron bonds, these are. So now these uh, delocalized orbitals are this particular one or uh, delocalized orbital is equivalent to the ligand to metal pi uh, sigma bonding interaction in case of the DY charge and tension model as we see in this case if we look at the orbitals of the ligand and the metal which participate in ligand to metal sigma interaction this is the ligand to metal sigma interaction and what we see in this case uh, that the lobes or the orbitals on the metal as well as the all the both the orbitals on the uh, ligand are of the same are in the same phase while this particular delocalized orbital is equivalent to the metal to ligand pi interaction or orbitals is participate in metal to ligand pi interaction because sorry what we have drawn for the DY chart and tension model earlier. So this is the pi star molecular orbital of the olefin and this is what is the uh, metal orbital, field metal orbital which participate in metal to ligand pi back donation in, in case of the DYH and Hansen model and what we see here the lobes on the metal have different symmetry and uh, and the two interacts and the same is the case for the uh, lobes for the orbitals on the uh, ligand because they are in different phases and what we see over here that this particular delocalized molecular orbital essentially is equivalent to or akin to the ligand metal to ligand pi interaction or orbitals which participate in metal to ligand pi interaction. So this is metal to ligand pi interaction and this is what uh, we get so um, for the metallocyclopropane description. So what we can see is that the metallocyclopropane description is coherent with the divergent Duncanian model that we have that was proposed or which is a qualitative model uh, of you know uh, the bonding in metal polyphene complexes. So this now allows us to explain also the reason why the deviation from planarity increases upon increasing the electronegativity of the uh, substituents in the on the carbon atoms in the olefin uh, because the more is the uh, electronegativity uh, on the of the subsequent carbon atom the extent of p orbital in the hybridized orbital is going to increase and that is why it is going to uh, deviate more from the planet B because what we see is again let us see both the description of the um, bonding description in metal olefin complexes. Uh, here we see that there are we have already seen that there are two two center two electron MC bonds here. MC bonds are present in this particular description. And also the carbon atoms are sp3 hybridized here. And the orbitals are localized orbitals. While in this case, or in this description of the DOH 
that that's a description of uh, bonding in a chlorophyll complexes. We do not have uh, two centered two electron bonds, but what we have is two centered three electron bonds because the uh, in case of the ligand to metal uh, interaction, sigma interaction, what we have is the ligand donates two electrons to metal. Uh, and in this case, uh, this forms the sigma bond essentially. And the, so, this particular interaction, uh, there are three atoms are involved, these two carbon atoms and the metal center, and there are two electrons, and that is why it is a two center, two electron uh, bond. Uh, similarly, when the metal donates electron to the empty pi star or vital of the uh, olefin, again, uh, two electrons are donated from the metal to ligand, and this is also a two center, three electron. Uh, bond, and that is why, in case of the Leuch and Gramson model or description of metal olefin complexes, we assume that there are two two centered three electron MCC. Now, this is not the correct way to draw MCC bond is present. Also, the carbon atoms in this case, as we have seen, they uh, retain the sp2 hybridization in present in the uh, parent olefin, and that is why the carbon are sp2 hybridized. So, now what, when we have more electronegative substituent on the uh, olefin carbon atom, the extent of uh, or the extent of you know use of uh, this p or vital in the formation of the hybridized or vital is going to be more, and this is as per the Benz law that we have learned in organic chemistry. Because the more you, uh, the more is the electronegativity of the substituent on the carbon atom, the uh, this the, the hybridized or vital that are going to form, that are going to be formed by the carbon atom, it will have more uh, p character. So that is the reason, in fact, why. You see that CH3 radical is planar, but CF3 radical is pyramidal. Because in case of CF3, we see that the, uh, the, the fluorine is more uh, electronegative than hydrogen, and that is why uh, the, the carbon atom uses more uh, P character or P has more P character in the Hybridized orbital formed by this carbon atom have more p character, and that is why it is going to be pyramidal. While in case of CH3 with less electronegative substituent, you know the hybridization is more uh, sp2, and while in this case it is more sp3. So more p character is there, and the same reason now also explain why on increasing the hybrid uh, electronegativity on the uh, of the substituents of the uh, carbon atom in the olefin. The deviation from planarity is going to increase because the p character uh, will increase more for the uh, for the carbon atoms in the case of the carbon atoms when the metal cyclopropane is formed. But while if the electronegativity of the substituents are less, then the p character is going to be less, and the hybridization is going to be more towards sp2 hybridization, and that is why the planarity is going to be retained uh, to a larger extent. So this is how we can explain the deviation in planarity uh, of the substituents in metal olefin complexes, uh, and this can be essentially explained with the help of this metal cyclopropane description of a bonding in metal olefin complexes. And we have also seen how it is coherent, how it is in line with the DUH and Antanchan model uh, for the metal olefin complexes. So this essentially brings us to the end of this lecture. What we have learned during this lecture are two different bonding models that one can use for explaining the bonding in metal olefin complexes, monoolefin complexes to be specific, because the first model that we discussed is the Dewar-Jat Dangantian model where the olefin donates electron to the empty metal D orbitals, metal orbitals of the uh, correct symmetry. And this is essentially ligand to metal sigma interaction, and thereafter the metal orbitals of the right symmetry again donates electron to the 
Pi-star antibonding molecular bio of olefin. This is the by vectonation interaction, and we have seen how one can correlate the electron affinity as well as the promotion energy data of different models to explain or the or to correlate uh, the uh, the ability of different metals to form metal olefin complexes because we see that the higher the electron affinity of these metals, there better is their ability to be a sigma acceptor from the ligand while if the promotion energy is going to be low then it, the ability of the metals to donate five uh, electrons to the ligand empty orbitals is going to be more so this um, so those metals with higher electron affinity and lower promotional energy are going to form more better complex or more stable metal olefin complexes so then we also saw the uh, we identified the kind of orbitals um, of the ligand as well as the metal which participate in this ligand to metal sigma donation as well as metal to ligand by back donation and then we looked at the uh, this essentially allowed us to explain why there is you know decrease in the cc bond order when the olefin coordinates with the metal because the electron density is increased in the empty bonding orbital while the electron density in bonding orbital of the olefin is decreased and this is essentially visualized by looking at the FTIR data that is the CC stretching vibration. We have seen that upon coordination of olefin to metals the CC stretching vibration decreases substantially from 1623 to something like 1515 or 1500, around 1500 it is. And when we looked at the structural data to evaluate if there is an increase in the CC bond length upon coordination of the olefin with metals, we saw that there is very small increase in uh, CC bond length upon coordination of the olefin with um, metals. But what is more interesting is, is the deviation of the substituents uh, on the carbon atom from planarity, but is uh, completely unexpected as in case of the olefin, you see that the, all the substituents are from, uh, lie on, a, on the same plane and this we could not explain with the help of the dy chart and calcium model straightforwardly and that is why we uh, took help of a metal cyclopropane description of this metal olefin complexes and then when we did uh, the linear combination of the two localized two center two electron bones in the metal cyclopropane description of metal olefin complexes we saw essentially that the delocalized orbitals that we generate from these uh, localized orbitals essentially can be correlated to the ligand to metal the orbitals which participate in the ligand to metal sigma donation as well as with the metal to ligand pi back donation in the DHR transaction model. So both of these two models are coherent essentially and uh, this also allowed us to uh, describe or define learn why uh, olefins with you know more electronegative substituents undergo further deviation, more deviation from planarity as compared to olefins which have less electronegative substituent on the carbon atom. And uh, this will, in the next lecture, what we will learn is the bonding in uh, conjugated olefins as the bonding situation in conjugated olefins are slightly different from what we see in case of mono olefins. So let me conclude this lecture with this and let me thank you for being with me during this lecture. and. Thank you very much.